Solana is a layer one blockchain network led by Anatoly Yakovenko. Anatoly comes from a telecommunications background where he worked as an engineer scaling these communications networks in the early days. Is that because of the background that you kind of came from or? Yeah, probably. I mean, like the, that, that kind of stuff where like, okay, we have a, an event that happens in one place. How do we get that one bit across to the place where it's going to as fast as we can? was just always in my mind. Perhaps this is why Solana has been laser focused on speed and scalability from day one. After all, Anatoly describes Solana as a high performance layer one network that sends information as fast, cheap, and close to real time as possible. And Solana has already accomplished this, boasting over 65,000 transactions per second, with plans in the future to quadruple this speed, which would bring it near the theoretical limits bounded by the laws of physics. Also, currently transactions cost less than one cent. Compare this to Ethereum, which has a maximum of 30 transactions per second and over $100 network fees on some DeFi transactions. This is perhaps why many consider Solana as an Ethereum killer. However, the Solana team does not consider Ethereum their main competitor. They're going after the NASDAQ to be a decentralized real-time financial terminal. Solana has made several blockchain innovations to enable these fast speeds. One is a shared clock amongst the validator nodes called Proof of History. And another is the ability to run smart contracts in parallel to one another. However, this new software architecture places greater demands on the validator nodes. Validators are required to run high performance hardware setups that can cost as much as $5,000. What this does is it increases the barrier for the average Joe to become a validator on the network. So it decreases or throttles the amount of decentralization that Solana has. For instance, Solana has about 1000 validators at the time of recording. And this is on par with some other new layer ones like Polkadot. But Ethereum is more decentralized than Solana with over 200,000 validators at this time. This is a major criticism of Solana. But despite these concerns, the price of Solana has exploded. Ever since their mainnet launch in March of 2021, the price increased up to the most recent all-time high of $216 per SOL token. This price increase has been attributed to the growing Solana ecosystem and specifically a very successful NFT launch called Degenerate Ape Academy, as well as a parabolic increase in the total value locked in the Solana DeFi ecosystem. There are many interesting projects we could cover. There's one called Star Atlas, which is an NFT game on Solana. Also, Audius, which is a Web3 music streaming platform. However, in this video, I'm gonna dive deeper into DeFi and we're going to talk about specifically the yield opportunities that are available now. I think that there are more lucrative yield opportunities on Solana because it's currently emerging compared to more mature DeFi ecosystems like on Ethereum, for example. Of course, we can't talk DeFi without mentioning DEXs or decentralized exchanges. DEXs allow users to swap one token for another in a decentralized way. So there's no centralized authority that's holding the tokens and facilitating this transaction. These DEXs are made up of liquidity pools. So another user group can come in called liquidity providers and they supply their tokens to these pools and they provide liquidity for users on the demand side to actually swap these tokens. Some popular DEXs on Solana include Orca, Sabre, and Radium. So let's take a look at Radium and what it takes to become a liquidity provider here. This is a list of all the liquidity pools in Radium, and you can see that each pool is a token pair. So looking at the second row, we have a Ray Soul token pair here. And in order to become a liquidity provider, we need to put in both Ray and Soul. And in return, you get Ray Soul LP tokens, 
which represent your share of the total liquidity in that pool and then also your right to the trading fees that that pool generates. You also get a portion of these trading fees and this is the main incentive to become a liquidity provider here. And the more liquidity in these pools, the better. So these DEXs are always in competition with one another to lock more liquidity in their pools because this provides a better user experience in that there's less price slippage when a user swaps their tokens on the demand side of things. In order to attract liquidity providers and to build loyalty for their specific DEX, these DEXs offer additional token incentives paid in the native DEX token, so in this case, Ray for Radium, and this is the basis of yield farming where users can stack multiple token rewards in order to maximize their gains. Let's take a look at the most simple form of yield farming on Radium. What we do, we start with our Ray Soul LP tokens because we just became a liquidity provider. And as I just said, these LP tokens are earning us trading fees in the background, but we can layer on more token incentives by coming over to the farms tab and going to the Ray Soul LP pool right here, where we can stake these LP tokens to start earning Ray token rewards. We can see overall that this pool has a 39.25% yield, where 4.4% is coming from the LP trading fees, and then the rest comes from the Ray token rewards. We are periodically paid these rewards, so you have to come in and manually harvest and reinvest and restake these rewards in order to compound yield farming gains. This is the most vanilla farm of yield farming, and later on I show you more advanced strategies. But first, let's continue on with a high-level overview of the DeFi ecosystem on Solana. The DEXs that I've just described are known as automated market makers. So when a user comes to swap their tokens, an algorithm on the back end sets the exchange rate between those two tokens based on the proportion of tokens in that liquidity pool. So it's like this automated robot that is facilitating these trades. So far, this is nothing new compared to the DEXs on Ethereum like Uniswap, but the scalability of Solana has enabled a new DeFi innovation. We can now have a decentralized central limit order book called Serum. Central limit order books and automated market makers, the two methods of a decentralized exchange, both have their pros and cons, but they should be thought of as complementary to one another, so it's powerful for Solana to offer both. Another major building block of DeFi is lending and borrowing protocols. This gives a time value to crypto monies, and it's something that the macro investor Rao Pal has continuously talked about that crypto needs a yield curve. You know, and then the macro story gets better because it's like, you know, if you remember, go back nine months, go back maybe 18 months, I was like, we need a yield curve. <laughs> Four months later, DeFi explodes and it's kind of this different yield curves everywhere and different risk curves and... God. Port Finance and Solend are the predominant protocols on Solana, very similar to Ethereum's Aave and Compound. Users pool their crypto together and lend this to borrowers, and borrowers post collateral, which is their other crypto monies, in order to take out a crypto loan. Crypto loans are actually unique in that they are over collateralized, so it means that the value of your crypto has to be worth more than the value of the loan that you're taking out. And this is different from traditional finance, which is typically under collateralized loans. If the loan to value ratio decreases beyond a certain point, then the position is liquidated, the collateral sold off at a discount, and the rest given back to the borrower. Stablecoins are another important DeFi building block, and they're designed specifically to maintain their value over time, unlike other crypto assets which are known for their volatile prices. Usually these stablecoins are pegged to a fiat currency like the US dollar. The two most popular stablecoins, USDC and USDT, are fully backed by US dollar reserves held in traditional financial institutions. This is how they maintain their peg. 
However, there are other types of stablecoins where some protocols allow users to mint stablecoins backed by their crypto collateral. So it's similar to the over collateralized loans that we just talked about, except a user deposits crypto as collateral into a vault and then can mint those stable coins sort of as a loan against this crypto collateral. Let's look at Parrot Finance on Solana. Moving over here, we see all of the vaults that Parrot Finance offers and Pi is the stable coin within Parrot Finance. So this Sol Pi Vault means that I can deposit Sol as collateral and I can mint Pi at a 150% collateralization ratio, meaning that if I deposit $100 worth of Sol, then I can at most mint $50 worth of Pi. And when I'm ready to close this position, then I repay the Pi plus an interest payment of 0.2% APY. Now let's talk about liquid staking. So first, a little background. Solana is a delegated proof of stake network, meaning that validators produce blocks and come to consensus with one another in order to secure the network. Another user group called delegators allocate their Solana token to these validators of their choice. Validators earn block rewards and the delegators share in these rewards. This results in a about a 7% staking yield rate for delegators at this time. Delegators can stake their soul through the Phantom Wallet extension, where it is locked with a validator of their choice until it is unstaked. This is the vanilla version of staking. Liquid staking is a popular trend in DeFi, where the goal is to unlock liquidity in staked assets. So some popular Solana protocols are Marinade Finance and Parrot Finance. And moving over to Parrot Finance here, we see that when I stake Sol, I receive PRT Sol back. So I'm earning 7% on my staked Sol, and now I have PRT token where I can go back out into DeFi and earn additional yield on that. And this is the value add of liquid staking. Next, we have DeFi dashboards, which I consider an important milestone in a maturing DeFi ecosystem. It's a hassle for users to have to go out and to get to different URLs to access different DApps. Instead, you can manage your entire DeFi portfolio from one single pane of glass. They're kind of like crypto wallets on steroids. So just as a personal example, I was airdropped a token on Ethereum about a year ago and I didn't know about it, so I never added it to my token list on MetaMask, and it just never reflected in my total assets on MetaMask. But I was playing around with the DeFi dashboard called Zerion, and uh, this is for Ethereum, and it showed me that I had been airdropped this token that's worth $5,000 at this time. So the DeFi dashboard just gave me an overall view of the assets that I own under that public address. Step Finance is a great DeFi dashboard on Solana. It not only shows me all of my token balances, but other positions in DeFi like yield farming and validator staking. And even in yield farming from this interface, I can click the claim button here for these Ray token rewards. Step has also built in a decentralized exchange, transaction history, and NFT gallery for viewing my NFTs but I want to highlight this opportunities right here where STEP aggregates all of the liquidity pool and yield farming opportunities across the Solana ecosystem. So again, it's about getting everything into one place. However, I want to show you more powerful yield farming aggregators than what STEP has here. Sunny Aggregator is a great example of a yield farming aggregator. It pulls together a list of the yield farming opportunities in Solana and so you can become a liquidity provider in these DEXs that it's showing down here. But instead of staking the LP tokens in the native DEX protocol, you can come over to Sunny and you can gain additional token rewards by staking your LP tokens in Sunny. So now let's push DeFi composability to its greatest extents. We're gonna use Sunny Aggregator, minting stablecoins and liquid staking in combination with each other to multiply our DeFi yields. 
First, we stake our soul on Parrot Finance to start earning the 7% staking reward and also in return receive PRT soul and continue on with this token. Next, Saber, a popular DEX on Solana, features a PRT soul-soul liquidity pool. So we can become a liquidity provider by supplying these two tokens in order to capture the trading fees generated by this pool and also receive PRT soul soul LP tokens in return. I know it's a mouthful. Now, as I said before, Saber has its own yield farming program, so we could just stake these LP tokens on the native protocol, but instead we are going to go back to the Sunny Aggregator and stake the LP tokens here in order to earn an additional Sunny token reward. If we look at the APY in Sunny, we can see that it's made up of partly Saber token reward and then also Sunny token reward. This is how coming over to Sunny has given us an added boost to the token rewards that we are getting. And this is as far as we can go for now. However, I read a Medium article posted by Sunny that talked about something called AG tokens. And when I was recording this video, I expected to receive AG tokens in return after staking the LP tokens on the Sunny aggregator. The Medium article alluded to being able to use these AG tokens to mint more stablecoins and earn rewards on those stablecoins, right? You would use the AG token as collateral. So this composability is absolutely mind boggling. I don't know where the disconnect happened. Perhaps this is in the future plans of Sunny to release AG tokens, or it could have been a personal mistake on my part. But um, to see a, an example of how this is currently working on Ethereum, go to Yearn Finance, which gives Y tokens, and these Y tokens can be used as collateral in something like Cream Finance. Finally, I'd be remiss not to mention the leverage yield farming offered by Soul Farms. It's interesting because this protocol combines lending, so users can lend their tokens and then on the demand side, other users can come in, borrow these tokens in order to leverage their yield farming positions. So let's look at an example of leveraged yield farming on Soul Farms. When we go to the vaults tab, I see the Orca-Soul LP is yielding 484% at a 3x leverage. So here I deposit 1.5 Soul and at 3x leverage, it means I can borrow 3 soul. So I have a total position of 4.5 soul. The nice thing about the user experience of yield farming on Soul Farm is that since I don't come with Orca, it automatically divides my soul into soul and Orca. I can become a liquidity provider to that pool and then it stakes it in the appropriate yield farming pool for me. Also, the other great thing about yield farming on Soul Farms is that it automatically compounds your gains. So the Orca that I'm receiving for staking these, this LP token is reinvested, is harvested and reinvested every hour. So this is a great automatic compounding feature which improves the user experience. However, everyone should be aware that leveraged yield farming comes with additional risks it's much easier for my position to be liquidated than if I was just doing 1x leverage. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.